they're not a turnoff for some guys, though, to get like photos like that or to have, let's say, their their first date advance so quickly and the guy's kind of thinking, oh, this isn't marriage material because, like, I've heard a lot of that. You would think that, but it depends on the quality of the sex they get from the girl. If it's fantastic sex, they forget their their standards of what they're looking for. And I'll be honest with you, that's what I experienced because they always say, no, no, it's a bit of a turn off, blah, blah. But it depends how much they attach to the girl and the experience. If they really liked it, they'll forget everything that they normally stand for. So one thing you said earlier in the podcast for guys is that sex is very important, physical attraction, physical touch and stuff like that. But that coupled with support. Yes. Why do you think support specifically is so important for men? Because they don't receive it from each other as much. They receive it on a shallow level. So what I mean by that is they might support each other in business or they might support each other in a a sporting event, but they don't actually know what each other are going through. Very few will say like, I'll say to even to my partner, I'll say, oh, how's your friend? He was going through that divorce. Is he okay? He's like, I don't know. He seemed fine at football. (laughs) And I was like, did you not ask him? And he's like, he seemed fine. He wasn't crying. I was like, he's not going to cry, but what, is he okay? And it's even with funerals. I'll be like, how is that person? Is he okay? I know his dad passed away. I don't know. He he was posting on Twitter, so I think he's fine. I'm like, no, ask him. And he just doesn't have those conversations with him. It sounds like me. And and I'm so worried about him. Seemed fine to me. I don't know. He's like, he seemed fine. And I I was like, he's like, I didn't ask. And I'm like, but why didn't you ask? You know he's going through a divorce. And he's like, I didn't ask him. And I was like, okay. See, but I tend to think that if it's important, the other person will bring it up. No. That's what I... But but why 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 don't they? But uh, why don't they? uh, Because they assume they're burdening you if they say it. They assume that they're... they Look, we actually enjoy hearing each other's problems. It's a form of bonding for us as girls. For men, they assume if you can't fix the problem what's the point of me telling you it so they just think okay my mom passed away god forbid if that ever happens to someone they think me telling you about it you can't bring her back so what's the point of me telling you so they don't speak to people whereas for women we still know that the support is helping us fix it and then just some listening is helping so they're too problem solving and not enough emotional dependency when it comes to men so they do you you need that sort of emotional dependency with with other men, let's just say, because I because I, I'm very much the way where if like if something's bothering me yeah. and I know I can't fix it, uh, it's tough for me to bring it up. Sometimes I will, but usually it's just like unless I really need to get it off my chest. Usually it's just like it's not worth talking about. I understand. In a lot of those if, cases, if you're not going to use men for that, which a lot of men don't, then you definitely need it in your partnership and in your relationship. And because they don't need to speak to other men about it, this is why support is so important from their woman. And if they don't get that emotional support and they don't get that emotional intimacy, they are always trying to fill that empty hole. And usually they think that they just want other women because they just want novel sex, but but really they want the novel feeling of being seen and heard by somebody else if they're deprived of that. That's fascinating. When we're using the term high-value man and high-value woman and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, do you think that there are any misguided uh, contributors to those things? So, for example, like when you imagine like a quote-unquote high-value man, high-value woman, is there something that they're kind of getting wrong? Like do, do people... When they imagine all of the contributing factors to a high value man, high value woman, mm-hmm. are any of those factors? the generally understood factors incorrect. I I think particularly the relationship with women, either the idea that to have multiple women or to have women that are, you know, half their age and hyper attractive, it's the women part that I find really, really like uh, contradictory. I think truly high value is the ability to ward off alternatives, to focus on your marriage and create a home for your children. That is high value because there's a legacy that you're hoping to create with children. Where they get it wrong is that you can have multiple girls on a yacht, you can sleep around in this and the other and I always say to men if you're sleeping around then you're potentially planting your seeds in low value women so imagine being a man where this random girl in this city that girl city that she, they're all carrying your babies and you're, they're allowing other men into their world or they're raising the child in a way that you don't agree with essentially your legacy is being depleted so I think that the real misconception when it comes to high value men is the idea of endless women sleeping around loads and loads being frivolous with who you're sleeping with enjoying every pleasure there is the life has to offer and that makes you a high value man but I think it's actually foregoing pleasure for your long-term goals that is actually more likely to make you a high value man particularly with the women selection because unlike women women we get to choose who we have children with in this day and age with pregnancies and abortions and contraceptives we get to choose as a man my body my choice means you have no say so if you're a truly high value man and you've got millions to lose and you get the wrong woman pregnant for the rest of your life you are serving 
jail time emotionally and financially with that woman. You have far more to lose. You have to be so strict with who you're touching. It's fascinating that you say that the man has to be willing to walk away. Yes. And then that is kind of his leverage in order to, like, be able to keep the whatever frame that he mm-hmm. has set in the beginning of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Don't you think that it would be hard for a guy in a loving relationship, in a true soulmate, mm-hmm. to actually wrestle with the fact that, hey, I might have to leave this? Or do you think it's more of just, like, playing the game? I'm going to fake kind of leaving so she kind of, like, has to reel her back in? Uh, no, the soulmate should be determined by the person's level of love and respect for you. If that is being compromised, she's not your soulmate anymore. And where people get it wrong is they attach the word soulmate to an individual, regardless of that individual's behavior, and then make it work because they're loyal to the cause. This is my soulmate. But the soulmate should be somebody who genuinely loves and respects and is loyal to you. If those things are being compromised, you have to change your mindset and say, this is no longer my soulmate. I might continue this relationship, but this is no longer my soulmate. And we don't even need the word soulmate. So I have to either I stay but I reevaluate this person and realize that they have the ability to hurt me in a way I didn't think they did. Or I walk away now and remain somewhat less hurt than I might be in the future. Because usually when we forgive unforgivable, I'm not saying everybody's bad. Like I require a lot of forgiveness because I will be rude and I'll be disrespectful, particularly when I'm on, on my period. And so I'm not saying you'd be perfect, but there are some deal breakers. And if I do the deal breakers and my husband still stays with me, unfortunately, he is attaching to his imagination of who I truly am, not who I really am. 